Good afternoon, and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to view our junior project in reservoir dynamics. Flow and hydraulic fractures, a comparative analysis of crop and permeability, and flow rate. My name is Kevin O'Sullivan. Last summer I was fortunate enough to work with Rosetta Resources in the Drilling Engineering Department, and this summer I'll be returning to Rosetta Resources, this time in the Production Engineering Department. I have keen interest in both aspects of petroleum engineering. Allow me to introduce you to a few of my partners here. Hi, I'm Sen Chan. I'm currently working at the LSU Perth facility. I'm also a research assistant here at LSU. I'm currently the vice president of American Association of Drilling Engineers, and my passion is in drilling. Hi, my name is Ahmed Habib, and I am an international student from the Sultanate of Oman. Last summer, I worked for BP as a reservoir engineer, and I am going back this summer again as reservoir engineering is the path I want to select for my career. Hi, my name is Jacob Harris, and I'm currently working in the decommissioning section of the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, and I'd like to pursue my career in reservoir engineering. The purpose of this project is to compare Darcy flow between a normal core sample and four artificially fracked and prop and packed samples. We will be contrasting flow rates through an unfracked core sample with a fracked and prop and packed core sample to observe and analyze the effects of different size fractures and propens. After diving into the theory behind fracture stimulation in the context of Darcy's Law, we will cut away to the actual experiment and examine the experiment in the context of the thesis with a discussion on the relevant equations and data. Finally, we will present the results, a brief cost analysis, and our concluding remarks and references. When dealing with nano Darcy permeability, relying on conventional pressure assisted flow is not exactly an economical decision given the cost of drilling and completion. So, fracking is utilized as a method to enhance flow rate from a pay zone. Why frack? With fracking comes superior surface area and conductivity, and less pressure loss near the wellbore. No fracture would stay open for long, though, without something to prop it open. In enters the importance of propping. And in our experiment, we sought to examine the role propping size has on flow rate. In theory, a fracture should result in infinite conductivity. In reality, however, the fracture closes, and propants are relied upon to prevent this closure. The resultant conductivity is still far superior to the original reservoir. For the purposes of our project, we examined how propants affect permeability in relation to fracture size, utilizing the Carmen Cosini equation to estimate permeability. In our experiment, we utilized a liquid permeameter, which uses constant pressure and a known volume, in combination with the recorded time for a flow through the sample, to calculate average permeability given a measured flow rate. Our approach to the experiment utilized a synthetic core, with porosity and permeability approximating reservoir rock. To create a fracture, we drilled various diameter channels into the different cores, and proceeded to pack the cores with varying size propens. The propant we utilized in this experiment was generously provided by Uniman. Pictured here are two sample jars, and Uniman was also kind enough to ship us a 5-gallon container of propant for our future experiments. The sands provided are Aronite sands, with 40, 70, and 30, 50 mesh. One of the sands is a coarse sand, and the other is resin-coated, although the specific benefits of resin-coated sand outside of the increased diameter did not apply to this experiment. Here we have a rubber gasket to ensure flow is directed through the core for a proper permeability measurement. Here we see the permeameter operation. In turning the bottom knob, we fill a known volume with fluid. Then, we turn the top knob and the fluid is then forced under constant pressure through the core in a recorded time. From this, we can calculate permeability. When originally designing the experiment, we encountered a few challenges. We had problems with sand production in the permeameter and had to apply a specific size filter. We cut to size a fine mesh and placed it on the bottom of the core and gasket to prevent sand production. We ran the synthetic core first, so as to have a baseline for our core. All core samples we ran were put through the permeameter a minimum of three separate times. And the final results presented here are the averages of those runs, excluding any outliers. 
With the flow rate per time, we calculated an average permeability around 650 millidarcy, which is significantly higher than a typical sandstone reservoir, and is taken into account later in our calculations. Proceeding along, we tested permeability with the 1 8 inch fracture. The two propens yielded, as expected, two markedly different permeabilities. The smaller diameter propent yielded a permeability of approximately 2 darcy, and the larger diameter propent yielded a permeability of approximately 2.75 darcy. Moving on to the smaller fracture, we should see smaller values for average permeability, and thankfully, we do, with the two different mesh sizes demonstrating similar drops in permeability. The coarse sand drops to around 1.7 darcy, and the resin drops to around 2.2 darcy. In terms of increased flow rate, it comes as no surprise that the large fracture and resin-coated propent yields the best results. As flow rate is directly related to permeability, we observed increases in flow rate proportional to the diameter of the propent utilized. Examining the larger propent, we see an increase in flow rate in both fracture situations exceeds that of the smaller propent. The average permeability is not particularly edifying, however, since the propent permeability is what will be of import in most shale applications. Dealing with nano Darcy shale permeabilities, and then a very large propent permeability, the average permeability would not be particularly informative. In calculating the propent permeability, we used the measured core permeability and average permeability to back calculate for the missing propent permeability variable. Here's the equation we utilize in performing this calculation. Comparing our experimental calculations to the theoretical calculations, it was relieving to see that our experimental values fell within the theoretical range, where the range is calculated using the upper and lower bounds of the potential prop and diameter for a given mesh. In this respect, we feel that the Carmen Cassini model is certainly valid, although there are a number of inaccuracies that could have caused the numbers to fluctuate, in particular, poor packing, but also wall effects. Since we were, without question, unable to replicate the packing effect of thousands of pounds per square inch of pressure, typically experienced in a frack job. We added a rudimentary cost analysis as it is difficult to consider flow within a prop and packed fracture without considering why the expense is undertaken to fracture the formation in the first place. For the cost analysis, we used the average daily flow rate for a first year Eagleford shale well that had been fracked and calculated what the revenue generated from that well would be, assuming 365 days of operation with oil at $75 a barrel. We can dream, right? Taking this revenue, less the cost of a fracture job and the running of tubing with packer and gas lift valves, we came out with $1,826,875 of profit before taxes and other fees. In the case of our experiments, our fract core had 355% the flow rate of our original sample, so we divided the average first year flow rate on the fract well by the flow rate ratio to get a hypothetical flow rate for our unfract core. Keep in mind that permeability for our synthetic core sample is orders of magnitude higher than a given shell core would be, so the cost analysis would swing dramatically in favor of fracking were we to be using Nano Darcy Perm on the pre fract comparison. Even with the high perm original core, the cost analysis favors fracking in the case of the 1 8 inch fracture and 3050 mesh resin coated sand. And this is merely in the first year comparison. Were we to extend the analysis to the second and third years where the flow rate in the fracked well would continue to be higher than the unfracked well, the numbers would shift in favor of fracking again. We chose not to perform this analysis as decline curves are outside the scope of this particular study. We considered a number of academic resources for our presentation. It was the work of Makarut on fractures and Jennings on propents that inspired the experiment. As Makarut explained in his work, the fracture with the strongest dilation also shows the most profound increase in permeability. We found this to be consistent with our experiments. In summary, we found that our experimental data was in line with the Carmen Cassini theoretical predictions and therefore find the Carmen Cassini equation to be an accurate estimation of permeability in fracture environments. Our findings also follow those of Jennings in that a larger prop and diameter was found to lead to a higher average permeability within the same fracture. Our cost analysis, predicated on sample data obtained from real wells and extrapolated to our project, has shown the economics of fracturing are strong even in cases where the original reservoir does not necessarily have nano-Darcy permeability. 
The experimental data is far from infallible, but hopefully the project has been edifying in its scope and presentation and holds promise of future improvement. And finally, some acknowledgments. Starting with Unimin. Thank you so much, Unimin, for supporting us with your varying size profits and providing us with general advice as we travel throughout this project. We would also like to thank Dr. Sears for helping us determine exact particle diameters. And also, thank you, Dr. Langley, for your great help and advice with regarding to carrying on with this project. We would like to thank Dr. Botanovich for his synthetic core and his advising. And last but not least, thank you to Rosetta Resources for providing us with well data with which to relate our experimental values and also providing us with much needed advice as we went throughout the project. And of course, thank you to the viewer for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch and judge our project. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.